Hey guys, welcome back to another video from the channel Learn From Basics. This is Joe here, and today we're back at it with another fun but easy OpenCV tutorial. This is part 2 of our Warp Perspective tutorial in OpenCV Python. Now I made a part 1 of it, and this is all, all of the code from here is in the part 1. I'm not going to explain what we did in part 1 because uh, that's going to make the video lengthy, but there should be a card that pops up right about now that if you click on will take you to the episode on part 1, and so will there be a link in the description that you can click on. So please check that out before you come back to this video because you'll need to know that in order to continue this video. Now, what I was trying, what I am going to say is that meanwhile, I've made two minor changes to this piece of code. I have first of all imported NumPy and renamed it as NP because we'll be needing that into today's tutorial where we will be hacking through the biggest array in order to make it fit our needs. And then I also added this function that basically checks if all of the points in your biggest array are correct. How does it do this? Well, I basically wrote this function that basically draws lines around the paper, and I tested this on a fully working program. So this, if this does not work, that means your array is not correct. So you can copy this function down from down in the description. It's really just me drawing lines on the image. The only thing that the only reason I don't want you to recreate this is because these points have to be exactly the same, or else that means the function is not correct. And the reason I'm emphasizing on you need to get all of this correct, you need your array to be correct, is because if your correct array is not correct, your program will not be successful. Now, in order to simplify whatever I said over like the last couple of minutes, all I'm saying is that I created a function that if your array is correct, should draw a box around the paper. Now, if it is incorrect, then that means when you uh, apply for the work perspective, your uh, your array is going to mess up. Now, how do I know this? Well, I basically got all of this data, and I basically drew this function from the completed program, which basically means it's always accurate. So, now, without any further ado, let's check if the current array we get from our already pro of processing and working program is good enough for the, uh, for the algorithm. Now, what we can do is, we're just going to use the corner frame because this is just us checking. And we can say, and now as you can see here, it doesn't return anything, the draw rec uh, function, it just draws on the main frame. So what we're going to do is, we're simply going to say, draw rec of, and then we're gonna say biggest, and also, yeah, our main frame is basically going to be corner frame. Now, let's rerun this program real quick. And you'll be able to see the program quite doesn't work. Now, in order, and now as you can see, these two lines are working properly. These one and this one, but these lines are crossed up. So now, in order to get this a bit more clear, let's give each line its own color. Over here, this the first line is green. The second line will make... Uh, red the third line we can make blue and then the last line will make a purple that's a purple i think uh, of course now let's see what two lines are messing up now as you can see the red and purple lines are messed up so this line uh, this line and this line are messed up so basically what we have to do in order to get this array to be correct is switch this point and this point and then also switch this point and this point so these lines are basically upside down so then we get the correct image now if going on in this tutorial that's basically what we're going to do we're going to process our array in order to get it into the right shape now i'm going to bring those back because i don't like multicolored it looks ugly to be honest we'll just bring it back to green now as I said, we're going to process some arrays, so we're going to have NumPy, and then I'm just going to comment this. We're going to use that later. The first thing we're going to do, guys, is we are going to, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're basically going to create a new array. We're going to call it biggest new. Will be equal to, and actually, actually, what we're going to do first is we're going to reshape the biggest, uh, 
the biggest array in order to be four by two instead of a uh, one by two, right? And I mean four by one. We're going to reshape it to be four by two as an array so we can get better results out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, biggest, oops, caps on, biggest will be equal to biggest dot reshape. This is a, a array function. And then in here, you basically give it the reshape size. So in this case, our size is four by two. Or basically four, four like this, and then two like that. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to create an exact replica of this array, but we're going to, instead of having an array filled, uh, filled with values, each position in the array is going to be filled with a zero. So that's going to be our dummy array. So we can say biggest new as our dummy array. And then we can say, and now we're, we're going to say numpy.0, so this will basically create a zero, uh, a, an array filled with zeros. And then it asks us for the shape, which is going to be 4, 1, 2, the same shape as biggest. And then it also asks us for a D type, uh, which is going to be integer, because again, uh, these are integers. Now if we print biggest, uh, print biggest new, and biggest, and we run this program, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, do you see how both of these match up? There's two in one row, and then two in one row, and then four columns. But instead of, and I think you're getting mixed up here, so what I'm basically going to do is move this to the next line. So I'm pretty sure that result wasn't the best. So let's try that again, shall we? Now, as you can see, both of these arrays have the same format. Both of them are inside an array. Inside another array, uh, so both, as you can see, both of them are inside an array. And for both of them, there's 0, 0, 0, 0. So in each subarray, there are two values. Same over here, and there are four columns. Same over here. So we basically created a blank template of an array to say. And now the next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to uh, we're going to basically process this like how we want it to. So we're going to say add equal to biggest dot sum, and this will basically help us with the uh, so it will it will basically add everything. So let's just if it's better for you to see it than me telling you it. Now, if we run the program again, you'll see it essentially just basically added both of these values up. So 101 plus 99 is 200. Uh, 1,162 plus 26 is 1,118, and so on. That's basically what happened. If you were to add biggest new dot sum, you'll see all of the values will just basically be zero. So as you can see, they're all basically just zero because there is nothing to add. So over here, we're, let's get back to the normal. Oops. Okay, so biggest dot something. We'll remove that. Why not? Now, the next thing we have to do, guys, is we have to. Uh, so now, what we have to do is we have to go to biggest, and then we're basically. Now that we have the add data, we're going to. Um, get some data from it and put it into the biggest dot new. So we're going to say biggest new of zero equal to, and then uh, we're going to say biggest, to, biggest new of zero is going to be equal to biggest of np dot argmin. So we're going to get the value or the index of the lowest uh, uh, sum. So basically, we're going to get the index of the lowest sum in order to put into biggest new. So here, mp argbin of add. And then this, of course, is going to be 0, 3. And then we're going to say biggest new. And this time, it's going to be for the third value, which is not going to be argmin, but this time it's going to be argmax. So that's the biggest value. 
and then we're going to our max that is and then what we're going to do next guys is we are going to get the difference same thing over here i'll print it again to show it to you you can say difference equal to numpy dot diff and then uh, first of all we need to give it the array biggest and then the axis which is just going to be one for now and again let's print a difference and let's comment this as we do not need that for now if i run this you'll see again it gives us the difference now let's just print biggest too just so you see what i'm talking about so as you can see, it basically gives you the difference. 101 minus 99. 26 minus, uh, oh, well, I mean, 99 minus 101. 1,162 minus 26. 1,163 minus 85. 155 minus 862. We basically got the difference. No big deal. And then if you guessed that we would do the same thing as we did before, well, you're absolutely correct. So we're going to copy this code snippet, and instead of zero, we're going to say one, and over here, we're gonna say one, and instead of three, we're gonna say two, and we're going to replace the add with the difference. We're doing the same thing. We're rearranging our array. That's all we're doing. Now that we have that done, guys, let's try our uh, draw rec function again, but this time, we're going to do the exact same thing, except for the fact that we are going to use biggest new. Now if I run the program, we run it, you'll be able to see there will be a really neat outline around the box. And actually to get a, good, a better aesthetic look, you can take this part, actually, yeah, you can take this part, this line draw, draws all of the points, oops. So as you can see, this line of code draw, draws all of the four corner points. You can take that and paste that underneath draw rack, which will basically just give you a better aesthetic. You, need, you don't need to do it. I just like to do it. And then we can backspace that. Now if we rerun the program. Ooh, okay, we got something wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah, so we don't want biggest... We want biggest new because again, we just, uh, we took out biggest, right? So there's basically nothing in biggest that we can use. All of the data now is in biggest new. Now, as you can see, we have an outline around our paper with the four corner points, which looks really great. Now we only have one part left, which is the most important part, scanning the object itself. Now we got most of our code done guys and I don't want to make this video too lengthy so I'm going to continue it in the next uh, next video. So there's going to be a part 3 and hopefully a part 4 that shows you how to make this project better as it only works for A4 sized uh, pages right now or sheets of paper right now. Now that's all for this video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please do like uh, a like down below and the if you have any questions or comments, then just put them down in the comment section. I'll have all useful links and the code for this function down in the description, along with the link to my GitHub repo and the tutorial for part one and part three whenever I post it. But again, that's all for this video. Hope I hope you guys I hope you guys liked learning this because I because I had a blast making it. Again, see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when I post my new videos. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.